Hi guys, I hope you're all keeping well and safe. Welcome to Early Years Matters TV. On this channel, we focus on everything early childhood related. And if these are the kind of videos you're looking forward, you have to do subscribe. And not just subscribe, turn on that notification bell so that whenever a new video is being dropped on this channel, you'll be the first person to be notified. Today, I'm going to be talking about pedagogical strategies in early childhood education. Yes. So this discussion is going to be all about pedagogical strategies that you can use in your early childhood classroom as an early childhood educator. Now, let me start by defining pedagogy. Perhaps you might be wondering, what is pedagogy? So pedagogy is simply defined as method and approach teaching in early childhood education. Yes, pedagogy is defined as the method and approach to teaching in early childhood education. So now that you know what pedagogy is all about, let's talk about some of the pedagogical strategies that you can implement in your early childhood classroom as an early childhood educator. So I'll start by talking about positioning. So in relation to positioning, let me start by talking about how you position yourself in your early childhood classroom. This is important. During activity, where do you position yourself? Do you position yourself where you can see all the children in your early childhood classroom? This is important. So as an early childhood educator, you need to position yourself where you can be able to see all the children. If they need you for help, they're not going to be struggling. They can easily reach out for you. For instance, let's say the children are engaging in painting. So if they're engaging in painting, they're going to be sitting around the table. They're going to be sitting in a circle. So you need to ensure that you position yourself whereby you can easily see all the children. You're not just one-sided, you're only focusing on some of the children. So this is important. You need to position yourself, be able to see the children so that they are not struggling or you're not struggling to see them as well. So position yourself where you can be able to see all the children. They are painting, you can be able to see them. Let's say, for instance, you're reading a story to the children in your early childhood classroom as well. So where are you going to position yourself where the children can all see the book? They can be the saying, Florence, I can't see. So this is what positioning is all about. Positioning has to do with a lot. Where do you position? yourself you have to position yourself where the children can see you positioning as well in relation to the children for instance if you're telling them a story so where are you going to position the children where are they going to be seated that they can see you they can see the storybook so this is also another aspect of positioning so positioning again has to do with the room layout so how do you lay out your room? You don't want the children struggling. For instance, you want the children to develop a love for reading. So they are not going to be struggling. You have positioned the book at the upper level that the children are struggling to reach out for it. So you have to position the book at the lower level that the children are not struggling. They can easily reach out for the storybook without your help, with unaided. They can reach out for the storybook. They want to paint. They can get the paint brushes themselves. They can get the apron themselves. They want to engage in make-believe play. They are not struggling to get the doll so positioning is really important in early childhood education the room layout where you position the resources where you position the children where you position yourself this has to do with positioning in early childhood and this is an effective pedagogical strategies that work very well in early childhood so now let's talk about modeling so another word for modeling is and tell so you want the children to do something maybe perhaps you're introducing them to something new so this is where modeling comes in you're showing them so the children see you do these things and then in return they do the same so for instance we want the children to tie their shoelaces unaided so you could use modeling here so you show them how to tie their shoelaces so you gather them around the circle boys and girls i'm going to show you how to tie your shoelaces now so watch me do my or you want the children to be able to button back on aided so you can use modeling here so you gather the children around the, the circle you button your shirt yourself so they see you do this and they can replicate they can do the same as well so modeling works where when you want to introduce the children to something new you're not just going to be thinking oh yes i want to introduce the children to how am i going to go about this they make use of modeling so you should modeling is show and tell so you're instructing the children you're showing them what you want them to do you want them to tie their shoelaces unaided you want to, them to tie their shirt you want them to do something in the classroom unaided so you show them how to do this for instance you want the children to develop a love for learning a love for reading for instance so you go over to the book corner yourself you're picking a book you know you're picking few story books one at a time 
time, you're flipping them around, you're feeling the texture. So the children are observing you do these things and then they tend to reciprocate, they tend to do these things. They tend to do the same as well. You need to understand that in early childhood, we have role models to the children. So whatever we do, without even saying what, without even using our words, the children tend to do the same thing as well. So they look at it this way, that if Florence is doing this, then it's fine. I can always do the same as well. So make use of modeling if you want to introduce the children to something new. So now let's talk about questioning. Questionize, you're questioning the children, you're asking them questions. And you need to understand that when you're asking the children questions, questioning their curiosity, but I'm going to encourage you to make use of open-ended question, still close-ended question. Because if you ask the children close-ended question, it's just a simply yes or no. Do you like your toy? It's going to be yes or no. But if you ask open-ended questions such as what do you like about your toy, then they're going to tell you a lot of things that they like about their toy. Maybe it's colorful, maybe sound. So which is different from clothes, which is different. Do you like your toy? It's going to be yes or no. But what do you like about your toy? What would you like to eat? What would you like to play with? So the children are going to be making use of their words. And in return, this is going to promote language development in early childhood. So you're asking the children questions, but make sure that the question you're asking them is open-ended question. You want to prompt their curiosity. You want them to think about the question you're asking them. So what do you like about your toy? What do you like about home? What do you like about preschool? So they can be able to tell you what they like about the preschool. They are playing with their friends. They are playing with their special door. There's a special book they like in the preschool. Compared to, do you like the preschool? It's going to be yes or no. So in early childhood, as an early childhood educator, make use strategy that you could implement successfully in your early childhood classroom is open-ended question. You're prompting the children curiosity, you're asking them questions, and they're going to use their imagination. They are going to think, okay, this is a question that you asked me, what do I like about preschool? What do I like about my preschool? So I'm going to think, okay, this is one thing. Okay, I'm going to think preschool. So in my next video, I'm going to continue from where I stop in relation to some of some pedagogies that you can implement in your early childhood classroom as an early childhood educator. All right, guys, so subscribe to this channel. And do not forget, and not just subscribe, turn on that notification bell so that whenever a new video is being dropped on this channel, you'll be the first person to be notified. And until I come your way next time, stay safe and mind yourselves for now. Bye.